<laughs> Call this meeting of the Board of Public Works for March 4th, 2024 at 5.30. First order of business, approval of minutes of February 19th, 2024 Board of Public Works meeting. Anybody? Second, anybody? I'll second. Right. I, I did Any have a question. Or corrections? Yeah, I did have a question before. I was going to second and then question. Um, <laughs> just real quick, uh, PW 23-20. Uh, it said the contractor is listed in the, the Momo. <laughs> it's pretty cool. but I was assuming it was a typo, but I, had to, I kept rereading it. I'm like, am I missing something? Oh. <laughs> Must be memo. Uh, that's what I was assuming. Yeah, it must be memo. Okay. okay. We'll Thank you. We'll make a correction. <laughs> Any other additions or corrections in a minute? Seeing that hearing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Number two, citizens' comments. Do we have any citizens' comments? Seeing none. Moving on to number four, request approval of a bid for Bram. Pickleball project presented by Justin Casperson, Director of Park, Parks and Recreation. Justin. Uh, thank you and good evening. Um, I think it was last month, maybe even in January. God, this mic will not stay. I'm gonna stay. Uh, last month, we got permission to go out to bids for the pickleball project. Uh, we let out bids, we got five bids in return. Um, I would say the bids were extremely competitive. It does call for the removal of the courts as well as uh, fencing, uh, light poles, excavation, earthwork, um, pouring of uh, under base as well as asphalt painting, fen new fencing, uh, light bases, um, as well as some concrete work and asphalt work in the area. What we'll be doing is removing four old tennis courts and putting in 12 new pickleball courts. Uh, if you guys remember, we did... Uh, get two grants. We got a grant from Wood County Seed Committee for 25000 We also got a grant from the Community Foundation for 10000 The city already committed 150000 So all in the city is about one eighty five. We do have a private group that's been out fundraising uh, on behalf of this project. Uh, they've raised over $400,000 and they want to commit the $400,000 towards the project to get it completed. As I mentioned, we got five bids. They're listed in your memo. Our low bid is Marwa Construction, a local construction company that we've done projects with in the past, and we feel comfortable with them uh, moving forward. So my recommendation is to approve the low bid of Marwa Construction for $508,475.83 and enter into contracts uh, with Marwood. It's a pleasure. Derek? Motion. Motion. Second. Mike? Any discussion? Any questions, Derek? Yeah, I got some. Hey, thanks, Justin. Um, just a couple things I wanted to check on. You already answered one, which was what does that all include? So thanks for providing that breakdown. Uh, that's huge for me to get a better understanding. Um, Semi-related, unrelated, uh, the next agenda item I know is also yours. I did see the, the proposed image in there, and I think we did see something different for pickleball. I just wanted to verify that that's not correct because it shows two basketball courts. I think when we saw a brand park right? oh that's the overall conceptual plan that yeah. was based off of 2000 and okay that's what i thought i, was saying, I thought we saw an updated version with all the pickle originally we we're just going to replace those hard courts not specified what that was going to be and eventually it became 12 pickle okay. courts yep. all right so that takes care of that uh appreciate that clarification and then the other thing i wanted to ask about is just the fundraising group um so I know we had talked about this a lot in the past. I think that's fantastic. I just wanted to clarify again, and we might have brought this up and I couldn't remember, what happens to any extra funding they raise? Because it does sound like even now they potentially have extra funding versus what the overall project would cost given the grants and additional money already uh, going towards that project. So does, is that going to go into a fund for future maintenance or how do we handle all that? That's exactly right. It's going to stay at the Marshfield Community Foundation and used for perpetual maintenance. So if nets go to heck or resurfacing or whatever it might be, it might be additional things for the project. Right now, this project will include light bases, like the concrete 
foundation, but not the actual poles and lights. So they're going to go out and try to raise mon's, monies for those lights themselves. And they want to have a nest egg set aside for future repairs, whether it's windscreens, future paddles, uh, anything they may see coming forward. So yes, it'll be a, a maintenance fund for the future. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye and the motion. Aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Number four is number five, request approval for, to solicit bids for the construction of the new softball fields at Brayham Park, presented by Justin Estes, director. So this project is related to our pickleball project in, in, in relation that it's in the same park. It's not the actual same project, but this is the softball field, which is the bookends of what we're trying to accomplish then. On the north is the pickleball, on the south will be the softball field. So this will be a complete renovation of the field, almost a complete renovation. We're not doing anything with the outfield or the outfield fence. Uh, so we're kind of cutting the infield out. And you can kind of see on the vid, uh, image there, you can see that in the backdrop or the background is the old softball field and then how far we're moving it to the south and to the west. So we're essentially moving it southwest about 85 feet, redoing the backstop, nets, dugouts, um, chain link fence along the first baseline, new infield, new bases, uh, potentially new lights if we can afford them, and uh, essentially a new uh, field itself. Uh, the field is used by the Marshfield School District, Columbus Catholic Schools, uh, Marshfield Fast Pitch, as well as our Special Olympics program in town. It's used year-round, uh, not year-round, it's years used in the summer exclusively, like Monday through Friday. Uh, the overall project uh, includes, uh, I think I mentioned it, the removal of the, everything in there and then bringing in new materials. We have a budget of about 175. So what we're going to do is go out and solicit bids. Hopefully they're favorable and we bring them back to you for approval. So I'm looking for approval to go out and solicit bids for the new softball field at Brain Park and bring back for your consideration. Motion drive, secondary. Any discussion? Yes. <clears throat> So thank you, um, Justin. I understand it's in the uh, capital improvement plan and the 24 budget. We've approved it. Uh, so the money's there. Um, what bigger picture? What are you seeing as a trend in softball compared to you know more recently? We heard a lot about pickleball, but is softball trending up, down, or about the same? Um, one of the trends we've noticed is this was an originally an adult slow pitch field, adult. Recreational sports has declined, but youth sports has still stayed strong, if not gained momentum. So that's why we're conver converting it more to a youth field. So it'll still be used. It's kind of the demand. It's pretty much the main use of this field right now is youth fast pitch. So our high school uses it for all of their JV practices and games. And then Columbus Youth Programs use it all summer long. And then Special Olympics uses it on weekends. And then Marshfield uses it. Marshfield Fast Pitch uses it for tournaments. And then one other question, if I could, uh, the other softball fields that we have in Marshfield, um, like at the uh, fairgrounds or high school, how does that all tie together? With the so we uh, have a kind of a, a, a shared group. There's a group, couple groups that share the fields at the fairgrounds. It's Marshfield Fast Pitch as well as the Marshfield Slow Pitch Association. Adult Slow Pitch goes Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, youth fast pitch goes Mondays and Wednesdays, so they kind of flip-flop back and forth. Bases are adjusted. There's an outfield fence that's put up and taken down every week. Okay. And so there, it's used almost all summer long, plus there's probably host anywhere from four to five tournaments at the fairgrounds. With the lights, it allows that to host tournaments. Without the lights, I'm not sure they'd host all those tournaments. So in this, this proposal, then, is would include lights if we can afford them. Yeah, it'll be an ad alternate if we can afford it, but essentially we're going to get the field done. Thank you. Eric? Yeah, I had a couple questions as well. Uh, and I was kind of going to tack on to that. So I know we recently saw a plan for the uh, Columbus uh, master plan, and I think that included new fields out there as well, right? Um, it did until the parking lot revisions. Okay. Okay. So are they not doing that? Because that was going to be my question is I know Marshfield just put out their new fields not long ago. If Columbus is adding them, are we still going to have a high demand for fields at the park for competitive events or practices? So uh, I can't speak for the Columbus school system, but they're originally planned on having a softball field out in that grass area. But with the addition of that parking lot, that was removed. So okay. they will not have a softball field out there. Uh, Marshfield is still um, 
th their fields are not necessarily open to the public. They're definitely open for use if you reserve it or, or schedule it with them, but definitely not open to the public for recreational use. And I totally understand why they're really expensive in their turf. Um, so they primarily only use it for their high school varsity teams uh, during the spring. Us, Park and Rec, as well as other clubs have used their fields just, just upon request or scheduling. They typically have not had any, any objections to people using them, just you gotta schedule it. Sure. Where these will be open all day long, as well as weekends, nights, whenever people wanna go there and practice or play. Okay, and that makes sense. Do we think that there will still be, a, and again, kind of to Russ's point about what we're seeing for trends, do we think there will still be enough activity there to justify a renovation of that field? I know I've, I've obviously got a kid in softball. I've seen that field get used quite a bit. I know adults have used it, but I know it sounds like we're kind of repurposing it a little bit. I think it was, I don't I feel so stupid saying this. I don't really know fully the size differences and compatibility differences with softball and baseball fields, but I'm assuming if we're making this a softball field, it might not work the same as well for baseball then? Yeah, it can be used for the little work kids for baseball, so it'd be the eight, okay. nine year old. So GPOs in East and West over at SJ Miller are the same size field as this. Okay. Only difference is those are grass and field where this is skin, all dirt and field. Okay, do we have any like baseball groups that are currently using it like for older teens or, or brains or anything? Yeah. No, it's only softball. Perfect. Um, and the last question I had was just on the number itself. So where do we get the 175? I, I don't know anything about what it costs to like redo a softball field or rebuild it or anything. So I was kind of just trying to do some research. Numbers were all over the place. So I was like, I can't get a good gauge on this. So what goes into that budget number? Well, the 175 will be broken down to many, many trades, if you will. Number one, we got to pay architect engineer to do the design services for that. And then we got to pay, um, you know, excavation, to demo, uh, disposal of whatever they got to, and then bring in new material and then add, outfit it. So we're gonna be buying bleachers, trash cans, um, benches, uh, preferably lights, uh, all those things. And then the fencing itself, uh, irrigation system if possible, um, outfield, um, it's called uh, fence topping or like a yellow mm -hmm. thing you see around there, that type of stuff, those are all add alternates. That'll be a part of that project. So if you're asking where does the 170 make up, it makes up almost everything and it's a very razor thin yeah. uh, margin to kind of get it done. That makes sense. And like I said, the numbers were all over the place. At first I thought it seemed on the low end, but I'm assuming that's probably due to the fact that it's a grass field and you know there's a lot of existing stuff there. Um, but also in terms of that for timeline, is there any chance that the demolition of the existing features will cross over with the demolition around the tennis courts that no, okay. but this will be done at the end of the softball season, which is in August. Okay. So we'll start construction in this after their season concludes. Thank you. I just just to backtrack a notch, the the price for the pickleball courts, did that approve or that bid include alternates? Did that the number that it did. The lights were the alternates and they weren't okay. accepted because Good. of the budget. We'll have a number of alternates on this project that may or may not be accepted in the budget, depending on where the numbers come in. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, say uh, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Number six, approval of the extension of the KNC cleaning contract for the city hall, presented by Tom Tershey, director of public work. All right, the city had contracted <laughs> KNC Cleaning of Millidor for cleaning services here at City Hall for the past five years. It has recently discovered that the contract has expired, so the contract made with this vendor, uh, contact was made with this vendor about continuing the contract for another three years. Uh, in 2008, uh, 18, the low quotation uh, for cleaning of City Hall was from KNC Cleaning of Millidor. Uh, quotes were requested for a five-year contract, and the monthly rates are shown below. Uh, KNC Cleaning has done a good job of cleaning services here at City Hall. I'm not aware of any complaints. In the previous contract, KNC Cleaning was approximately 25,000 less over the period of the contract than the next lowest vendor <clears throat> for the five years of service. And um, uh, they are currently doing the cleaning services for the wastewater utility offices. Uh, discussing the opportunity of extending the contract for an additional three years, ANC Cleaning has proposed a 3% increase for each year going forward. 
So therefore, I'd recommend a three-year extension with, of cleaning services with contract with K City Hall to KNC Cleaning LLC at the cost indicated below. So for 2024, 1350 per month, 2025, 1391 per month, and 2026, 1432 per month. Are there any questions? I have one. Okay. Yeah, Mako, who got a motion? No, I, he asked if there were questions. I have a question. I got a motion. I'll take a second. I won't take a motion. Second. Go ahead. So, um, just rough math, we're looking at about a $50,000 cost over three years. For the, you look at um, um, 13. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, did we go out for bid on this? In the past, we did. No, we did not go out for bid. Um, so, it just kind of strikes that it, it's exceeding our $25,000 um limit where you know our policy where we must go out for bid whether it's a single project or a continuation project i just realized that now when i'm looking at the numbers i can't remember the policy number um 4.80 yeah i have no problem if you want to go back out for bid it's going to take me a month or so to get the contract uh, uh get a bid out there uh, but you know you could award it for two years. We think that'd be fine too. You want to you as an alderman have the right to supersede that policy. I just thought that when I, when we made contact and he he actually brought it to my attention that we were out of the the contract that was expired. And when he said three percent increase, uh, yeah. I thought it was a great deal. So that's why I just kind of yeah. brought it forward. I, no, and I I appreciate that. I just. Uh... You know, it's discipline and the use of the policy, the application of the policies that we have out there. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to have them. Um, so I'm I'm open to an amendment, but I'll I'll just sit back. Derek, no, I'm I'm glad you brought it up. I had the same question, uh, and I was wondering, kind of the same process that you suggested is: do we shorten the contract in order to not have to bid it out if we feel comfortable with this number? But I also did ask: should we be bidding this out? It sounds like the numbers we got. I mean, it sounds like they're favorable, but it looks like. The initial numbers that we had pulled in were quite a while ago. I don't know if anybody's more competitive now. Um, I think at the time, I want to say you had a note in here that it, it was pretty low compared to other bidders. Yes, original. it was okay. actually for City Hall Cleaning. Um, the difference uh, between the next lowest bidder for the five years was 25000 Yeah, and, and that's where I was kind of like, uh, it sounds like we have a good thing going. And, you know, usually I'm of the opinion if you... It's not broke, don't try to fix it. Um, but I would suggest we shorten that. If anything, if we need to make an amendment, I would suggest we go that route. Um, I did have a couple other questions, though. Uh, when I saw that the contract was, it looked like it was five years, and I think we started in 2018, so it would have recently expired. Do we know when specifically that expired, though? Um, I'd have to take and look that, but I think it actually expired uh, four or five months ago. So that was going to be my next question is how do we track that? Because um, I find it always a little concerning when we run out on the end of a contract and we didn't know we ran out because it, it sounds like, I believe, if I read the contract correctly, I think they could end it at any time, same as mm -hmm. we could. Yes. So yeah. we could have been in a tough spot. So I wanted to make sure we have a method for tracking that. And I think that's overall not just public works. Um, and then I just wanted to check the contract was kind of high level. So I didn't know, do we have anything in here about, you know, like, do we keep like a cleaning log? I know we have daily tasks and things listed out, but just to make sure work's getting done. Um, or do we, you know, like, do we have any kind of security restrictions with all the government stuff we have here? Is there anything <coughs> in there just in case, you know, we have somebody in who does something they shouldn't be doing or anything like that? Is there any kind of coverage for us in that type of contract? Um, they have to have insurance. That's one thing. So uh, that kind of protects us there. Uh, no, we haven't had any real issues with them over the last five years. Um, but uh, um, I basically, when I pulled this contract out, when I was made aware of this, because I only had a two-week transition to my position, so I was not aware of all the contracts that were out there. And I've still been learning a few that have come up here and there for various things that the city has. So it was partly my fault for not knowing that this contract was coming due. Um, 
but uh, um, I'm basically copied uh, the contract that was previously set for this for this uh, work. No worries. And listen, you're a super busy guy and you take a lot on. I don't blame you at all. I'm just thinking it shows us an opportunity for where we can better, you know, capture these things uh, going forward. And I don't know that we necessarily need it either. I mean, I was just asking, I don't know what's standard for government contracts. If you have somebody cleaning, you know, where there's government documents and things like I'm sure we have everything locked up securely, but obviously there's a lot of stuff that people could get into if they really tried hard enough. And I just like to make sure that we're protected. So I just thought I would put that out there. Um, but yeah, I do want to echo Russ's comments that if we are going to move forward with this, that we should probably amend that to be a shorter contract to uh, avoid any policy violations. Um, just a quick note. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, the clerk's office locks everything in the safe uh, for the evenings, and they have a, a locked room in the basement also for secure documents. I know that several of the offices get locked and they don't unlock them for cleaning services. You set your garbage cans outside of the door versus actually entering those offices. So, uh, I assume it those varies. are the offices listed as not um, to be cleaned. No, actually, it's per whoever's office. Like, I will lock my office door at night. Um, and just set my garbage cans out if I want them to clean. If I'm here um, one night and they're vacuuming and I, I'm in the office, I'll just let them vacuum. So, okay. So, just to follow up on, on Derek's question, um, so how, we're not the only tenant here. So, the um, the um, the judge's chambers, for example, or the, his office, how was that treated? Is that also locked? And that's locked. That's locked. I am not sure how they get in there if they do. If they even clean it, is it part of the scope of service? You know, or I don't see it called out specifically. I mean, security is a valid concern. So that's why. And I'm not sure what the judge. See, his office is listed as one of the offices that are cleanable, but if just like my office is and HR's office is and Steve's office, but I don't think some of those don't get unlocked for the cleaning services. So it's, I guess it's up to the, the person that's actually has that, that room. Yeah. I don't know if I have a key or not for the judge's office. Okay. But I'll, in the interest of, um, Adhering to the policy, I'd like to amend the motion to cover us through 2025, the extension through 2025. Just one year? Um, it'll be 24 and 25. Oh, gotcha. Thank you. Second on the, mo on the amendment. I'll second. Or Mike can. <laughs> Any discussion? Did we get a second for the actual first motion? No. Mm -hmm. We did not get one. We did? So, no, we don't actually have our so first motion. Mind anything yet, so we have to go back and get it. I tried so, to get a motion and a second, but you guys wouldn't so, give it to me, so. Yeah, I'll just let that one fail, fault. and then we'll start over again. Okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, that said, I'll, I'll make a motion then that we approve uh, extending the contract through year 20, 2025. So a two-year extension? Two-year extension. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on, do we have any uh, items for um, future meetings? Hey Mike, just for clarification, can you clarify if the motion passed then or failed? No, oh, it passed. Yep. It passed. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to make sure. Thank you. No items for future agendas. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion, Mike. Second, Second. Derek. Adjourned.